I think we should start. So good morning and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Perhaps good evening for some of you. And welcome to this uh, EORE Hour webinar, which will be uh, dedicated to the regional harmonization of data collection, analysis, and message in uh, Western and Central Africa. So welcome to all of you, a special welcome to the colleagues uh, from the Regional Protection Working Group in uh, West, West and Central Africa, um, especially the co-chair of this group, Patrice uh, from UNHCR and Fred from uh, DRC. Welcome to you. Um, welcome to all the um, Mine Action colleagues, especially and including the EORE colleagues, Explosive Ordnance Risk Education colleagues. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, we have people from the region and people who uh, are from beyond this region. Um, I would like, before I start um, introducing the, the, you know, uh, what is this group and the purpose of this uh, EORE hour, um, I would like especially to thank Caitlin, Caitlin Hodge, um, because she is the one who uh, developed this concept of EORE hour and promoted this. We believe this will be an accelerator for knowledge exchange within our sector, the EORE sector. So um, this is a new um, process that will be proposed for every month. So we will we'll have one hour dedicated to any topic relevant to EORE. And this is the first ever EORE hour we, we organize. So there will be around 12 per, per year. 12 of these uh, webinars. So thanks, Caitlin, for putting together all these um, um, URE hour. Uh, that is a new uh, platform for knowledge exchange. And special thanks to Huda Shalshul uh, from UNHCR, who um, wanted to um, organize this uh, webinar and uh, especially uh, to focus on this uh, region, this very important region for mine action um, and, and for all the work you are doing as part of the, the protection working group. So about EORE, because we have newcomers, um, I should define, try to define what is EORE in a, in a few words. Um, explosive ordnance risk education is, is one pillar actually of a um, broader sector that we call mine action and that covers all efforts to, to mitigate the risk um, and the impact of landmines and, and other explosive devices. For example, you have a pillar dedicated to clearance and this pillar uh, that we call EORE and we used to call it mine risk education in the past or mine, mine awareness, this pillar is uh, dedicated to um, how we can um, provide to millions of people who are at risk of, of because they have to deal with this device, how they can manage uh, the risk related to explosive ordnance. So we are engaged in around 60 countries, the whole sector, the whole ERE sector. Um, and we provide public information campaigns, uh, education efforts, committee-based activities to reach those people and to promote behavior change approach so then they can cope with this issue and we can uh, save lives and limbs uh, at the end of, of this process. And of course, WAC, WACAR, uh, the region of West, West Africa and Central Africa is important as it is an highly affected region, as, as you know. It includes Lake, Lake Chad Basin. It includes uh, countries like Mali, a, a number of countries in the Sahel. Um, it includes recently CAR, Central African Republic, um, that is affected by IEDs, uh, and of course, many others. Uh, I, I won't mention all of them, but we, we have also Cameroon, Burkina Faso, etc. So. It's a very important uh, region, um, and um, we we have uh, EORE activities ongoing in, in those in this region. This group, this advisory group called the EORE Advisory Group, is 
um, group of around 15 organizations. Some are observers, some are full members, but we have in this group NGOs, we have UN agencies, we have ICRC, we have a coalition like the International Campaign to Ban Landmines. And the purpose of this group is to raise the profile of risk education, to improve quality, um, to improve coverage, to improve equity uh, in, in uh, this sector, to really um, uh, professionalize this sector. It's co chaired by um, two organizations presently, UNICEF and um, HI, Humanity and Inclusion, and Celine Cheng is also um, joining us today. Thanks, Celine, for this. And my last point um, on this introduction is to really thank, again, um, UNHCR, the team, and also DDG, uh, sorry, DRC, and um, especially Huda, to, you know, for prioritizing this region. We believe that this region is um, very important and a, a little bit left aside. I just checked the latest data from the Landmine Monitor. And when we look at the last five years, uh, when we look at the top 10 recipients for mine action uh, funding, and this is a huge amount of money, it's about 3 billion over the last five years that were invested on mine action. We have only one country in Africa out of 10, only one is, is from Africa and none of, and this country is in, even not in, in your region in, um, in West Africa or Central Africa, it's Libya actually. So this is something we need to modify that we need to change. And uh, for that, we need harmonized data. We need strong evidence uh, including to raise more funds for this uh, region, because this is an issue as well. We need to raise more funds for, for mine action. There are many other purposes for having a harmonized uh, data collection um, and messaging approach, but I will stop here and hand over to uh, Huda uh, Shalshu. Have a nice webinar. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Hugh, for this uh, introduction. My name is uh, Huda Shalshul, Senior Legal Officer in charge of IHL and UNSCR here in Geneva. Um, and of course, I, I, will, I will start with saying that uh, this webinar is an opportunity to, to have an honest, open discussion. And uh, uh, more than listening to the presentation, we need really to, to to brainstorm together. And the initial idea of this webinar was when I started discussing with the uh, advisory uh, group co-chairs uh, how to brainstorm around harmonized data in the, uh, in the different regions, actually. But uh, this particular region, for, for the reason you mentioned, it's, it's not um, a region that we, we we are really focusing on when it comes to main action or uh, risk education activities, while it's for UNSCR and for other agencies is number one uh, priority because of the increasing number of displaced population in Western and Central Africa. There, there are different rationale, actually, it's not only one reason why we have this, uh, we wanted this webinar as UNSCR and also with the regional protection working group members and uh, uh, UNMAS, uh, who is, uh, um, we have uh, one of the speakers from UNMAS as well, and uh, I will uh, introduce him later on. But um, I wanted to say that for UNSCR, the priority, as you know, is to ensure that uh, refugees, uh, IDPs, and other person of concern can return in a safe and sustainable manner. And uh, uh, of course, the um, URE is vital to those returning to, to mine contaminated areas in order for them to make informed choices for safe return. Uh, in addition to that, UNSCR are committed to further invest in protection analysis and, uh, and data on internally and forcibly displaced population. Uh, that's why it's important for us to have this example of uh, Project 21 that will be presented by uh, the co-facilitator uh, co of the Regional Protection Working Group, because it's one initiative that we need to think about more on how to mainstream 
EORB and mine action related activities into protection uh, analysis, monitoring and risk communication and community engagement. Uh, another reason is, is again, the, the Western and Central Africa uh, region specific challenges. The number of uh, people forcibly displaced continue to increase in the region uh, to reach 9.7 million person of concern to UNSCR. Uh, it's 9% increase over the pre uh, previous year. We have, um, uh, as of June 2021, 1.4 million refugees and 6.9 million IDPs. And uh, when it comes to, to classification of the way UNSCR uh, presents uh, the different uh, challenges in the region, we talk about situation. And we have in Western and Central Africa region, three main situation, the Sahel situation, Lake Chad vaccine uh, situation and car situation. And I think with, uh, with the, the first presentation from Fred uh, Mary Bael, I hope that I'm, I'm pronouncing the, the name correctly, we will, uh, we will have more information about these figures and these uh, trends and the protection challenges and to try to think together how we can um, uh, work more on, on, on mine action related uh, figures, analysis, data, how to, to provide more harmonized messages to the different situation. Uh, it's challenging, it's more challenging than um, what we try to do in uh, MENA region, for example, when uh, through the regional durable solution working group, we try to harmonize the messages for Syrian uh, refugees and Syrian IDPs in Syria, because we are talking about the same population. Here we have different nationalities, different movements, and the, the, the challenge is even bigger. Uh, so I will uh, uh, give the floor now to uh, Fred, uh, the Fred Marie Bael, uh, the co-facilitator of the Regional uh, Protection Working Group, uh, in order to uh, to introduce this Project 21, this Regional Initiative for Protection Monitoring and Analysis in Western and Central Africa region, and then I will present the second speaker, uh, Mr. Gilles, afterwards. Fred, over to you. Thanks. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Huda, for the introduction. Um, I'm going to take the next 10 minutes to present uh, to you at a project called the Project 21, which was a regional initiative to, to harmonize protection monitoring uh, in different countries. So uh, we started two years ago with the same, uh, with, a, with a joint uh, observation is that if we want to uh, push forward the, the narrative that we are in a protection crisis, we need to uh, be able to provide valid data and valid evidence uh, about it. And the, where we were is that in the 21 countries of the Western Central uh, Africa, the countries with, which had protection monitoring were all using tools that were the same, but just a little bit different. And, and, and that difference was big enough to make it impossible to cross the data together or to have valid data. So the, the, we worked with the, protection, the Regional Protection Working Group, where UNHCR uh, and DRC and other partners, 20, um, 14 different uh, other organizations in order to, to try to develop a protection monitoring based community based protection monitoring system that would be harmonized between the, the, the different countries. And we started uh, last year in the three uh, Sahelian countries of uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, and, um, and Niger. Uh, oops. Yeah. So the idea was to obtain comparable data to be able to have transnational protection tool in order to monitor and to show the difference, but also the common uh, element between the, 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 the different countries. Since last year, we've been reviewing that, that, uh, that instrument, that mechanism, and we also have been uh, deploying it or testing it in different settings in, uh, in Ivory Coast. 
uh, and lately in uh, in Nigeria uh, and Chad, and it is also being implemented uh, privately in in Cameroon at the moment. The objective is clearly to generate co coherent regional narrative on the protection situation, uh, to show the correlation between protection risks and the the environment, the lack of services, and, and so on, and also to move away from uh, uh, an approach to protection that will only uh, record uh, situation following incidents. So one of the elements that comes out is that if we want to work on solutions, if we want to work on root causes for protection, the elements are intertwined and to, to, to communicate only on uh, in, uh, individual incidents, uh, is crossing path with, or is making it confusing with security uh, reporting and uh, or monitoring and so on. So the since we have been putting forward that uh, that tool, the P twenty one, really start to it really helped into bringing that in different countries to start being able to talk the same language and to 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 show what is coming out uh, of that monitoring and, and some of the, the, the very essential uh, elements were, were used uh, on advocacy, but also in terms of coordination, in terms of addressing and programming and, and addressing response, including the, the element of the efficiency or the strength and the importance of community-based protection uh, mechanism, uh, the role of local uh, authorities and local uh, local leaders it might not be uh, a train smash but it's it's very it's it's coming quite uh, highly in the in the, in the monitoring we can also start after a year seeing the different patterns in terms of the response and the needs um, and it it help uh, identify quite strong uh, strong element. So if you're not familiar familiar with it, um, I, I would ad ad advise you to. So these are the products that we have. So we got three products. The first product is a monthly dashboard presenting the a photography of the protection monitoring that happened in the over the over the past month based on two different questionnaires, a first questionnaire uh, for key informants and a second questionnaire for with uh, household within the communities where the key informants are. We have been organizing the targeting uh, uh, on, on a base, on a geographical base and trying to, to have uh, a represent you know, a, sta um, a sampling that is representative of 5% of the level two uh, admin in uh, in a region uh, from admins uh, administrations uh, and geographical uh, settings that were accessible at the time. Um, I see that my colleagues of uh, Reach is there, and we've built up the method about the, that uh, five percent sampling based on um, on the method of Reach. The idea was also to be able at a later. Um, as soon as possible, really, to start uh, combining information and sharing information with other information gathering systems and mechanism, uh, mention reach, uh, DTM, and, and, and others. So we've got three different products. The first product is a monthly dashboard. The second product is uh, every six months, we are trying to look at trends. We are look, we, it's a protection monitoring uh, system. So we're trying to look at trends to see if there is any type of uh, change in patterns and, and that will obviously improve with, the, with time and with uh, amount of enumerators and amount of people gathering information to the protection, the, the, the project 21. Um, why it was quite important to present it um, on this UR uh, event and UR hour, I think it's it's just to, to to start with maybe the difficulties and the opportunities that we've seen with the P21. We worked on it two years ago, started to implementing la it last year, and it's not been um, always met with. Uh, great uh, enthusiasm from everyone. Um, however, we, found, we are finding that uh, it is absolutely crucial 
in the different countries to have uh, to use similar language, to use similar uh, uh, variables, the way that questions are formulated to be to 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 be to be similar, and and so on. We the P twenty one is covering seven different families or access uh, for protection um, from child protection, education, gender-based violence, general pr protection, community engagement solution, uh, legal uh, protection, uh, and others. It's clear that if I'm looking at the aspect of uh, information about uh, or incidents about uh, mine or uh, explosive device, there's only one question in the entire uh, P21 that is uh, about that. We cannot go too much in details in every single sector or subsector. What is possible, though, is what we aim to do is to have a generic, like a P21, uh, the P21 generic uh, protection monitoring tool, uh, which can serve as a base for more detailed uh, assessment or more detailed questions sector specific with types of add-ons, add-ons on education, add-ons on gender-based violence, add-ons add on um, uh, mine action, uh, URE or, um, or others. The idea is we need to ask the same question the same way based on a similar, as similar as possible methodology in order to have data that are valid and with data that are valid to start using them and start using them to adapt the response to, to the response. The other thing what we uh, believe it's quite crucial is to have, when we have a protection monitoring tool, which is quite generic or global or general, um, it also opens up the possibility when you have those add-ons and when you, you have those specific questions that are sector specific to link them or not with questions that you wouldn't have asked otherwise. So you can see that um, in the past six months, the in terms of solutions, in terms of the needs, what the what the needs of the what the people identify as the needs will vary seasonally with the rain and for on alimentation on a, on a, on food uh, needs for food for water and so on, and that will also affect completely the way that people are identifying the need for education, for uh, psychosocial support, for information and and, and so on. Um, so I think that that's where we are in, in, in 10 minutes with the, the P21. Uh, it's, we, we, we've got little small question currently on URE. We've had difficulties into sharing the, the, the tool and it's, it's still up and down. Um, every country is identifying that's to, to bounce back on what uh, Uda was saying is that there is a, a lot of difference in situation and uh, in, in our region. Every country will bring back what's, what the particularity of their context is before anything else. And what we see and what we find is that by doing so, by identifying the difficulties first before identifying what we can have in common, we are self-sabotaging. It's better, it's easier to find also what we have in common. And from there, you can, we can have those add-ons, so we can have those elements that are country-specific. But if every country is developing, deploying, and developing their own system to gather evidence or to record incidents or to record uh, changes information, it's very complicated, both at the regional level, at the global level, but to have a consistent a message in terms of advocacy, in terms of identification of needs and so on. And also, if we if we lack that base, it will be much co more complicated for countries or specific situations who have specific assessment to gain uh, amplitude or to, to, to show the extent of, the, of that. So that's it on my 10 minutes. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Fred. Actually, uh, what I liked most about your presentation is the, the, the way you presented Project 21 in a humble manner, uh, realizing the limits, realizing the, the um, also the um, reluctance in the beginning. But I think it's a, it's a very important initiative because 
the beginnings are always difficult, especially when it comes to a complex region like Western and Central Africa, and also when it comes to uh, harmonizing uh, the data and trying to to find a common ground uh, among uh, and across the operations. So I, I think it would be very good to, to know also the plan for the future Project 21 afterwards during the, the, the discussion. But I will uh, give the floor now to uh, uh, the next speaker, Mr. Gilles Delecourt, the head of Mine Action, who will represent uh, UNMAS uh, in, uh, uh, today. I, I thought that, um, I think he's connected with my name because I shared the link. <laughs> so maybe he's... Okay, you didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, it's another Huda Shalshul. <laughs> oh, my colleagues will, will rename uh, very quickly. Voila, we have Gilles de Lecour. Very good. Uh, over to you, Mr. Gilles. Okay. Thank you very much. I didn't know I changed my, my job and my gender, but uh, let's go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as uh, Huda said, I'm Gilles, the Chief of Mine Action Program for Nigeria. Uh, thanks for that opportunity to, 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 to have some exchange on the, what's going on uh, on EOARE Northeast uh, Nigeria. Uh, I will cover that presentation with to, to present you a quick overview of what is the situation, what type of data we are collecting and the limitations and some thought about uh, uh, things uh, which can be uh, shared among us. And for future, I think it's really necessary to have a, to continue to have future discussion with uh, uh, a better in inclusion of mine action in, in any type of protection activities and uh, data, uh, data management. Um, next, please. So a quick overview, huh? I want, uh, is just to show that uh, 1.5 million people are in need of mine action activities in Northeast Nigeria, uh, Nigeria uh, as far as it's covered in the 2021 humanitarian uh, needs overview. Uh, practically uh, for the last eight months, we have 448 recorded explosive incidents resulted of 1,063 civilian casualty. I will go on that uh, on other maps later. Uh, a little bit more than 750,000 people receive explosive ordnance risk education since uh, the launch of uh, my humanitarian mine action in uh, Northeast Nigeria in 2018, and uh, all the number of humanitarian workers, UN staff, and government officials. Uh, who receive also uh, this type of uh, awareness raising uh, uh, session. And modalities for the time being, it's in person, in communities, messaging through radio, distribution of talking devices. This is something, a pilot project, which uh, should start in the next uh, uh, few weeks. Uh, and integration of your session in the, the, the school curriculum. I think um, we are in an environment where access for humanitarian workers is a huge, huge issue. Uh, we said the uh, humanitarian response is mainly uh, in IDP camps or majority and with host communities. So it means uh, uh, people who are living in other Places are really difficult to reach. Uh, you need to, we need to really to think and to invest much more on localization of the aid and also innovation uh, in terms of uh, uh, EOERI uh, methodology, etc. Uh, this is uh, that's why I think at the advisory group um, uh, on EOERI we already talked about how some initiative uh, have been uh, started in Syria. Uh, I think two years ago, as part of the work uh, which has been done with the uh, Regional Solution uh, Durable Working Group. And that I think uh, from the advisory group, it could be uh, really interesting to, to have that on uh, the distance, remote UAE, remote uh, monitoring uh, and innovation. Next, please. Uh, the map on the left uh, is called potential contamination. Uh, in fact, uh, I was referring to the, the, the issue of access uh, and, and 
and because we, it's really difficult and dangerous to deploy non-technical survey teams. So we need to define uh, other ways to, to identify the threat. So we are collecting secondary information and compiling those information. Uh, it's about victim activated uh, improvised explosive devices. It's about incidents related to uh, uh, explosive remnant of war, uh, road planted uh, IDs, but we are not covering, we are not including anything related to person born in ex improvised explosive devices or vehicle born, because this is not something we can prevent. It's, uh, it's, um, it's, uh, uh, it's not a victim activated, uh, it's, it's activated by the person. So in another way, and also uh, it's important for us to make that distinction because part of the, uh, the, the Nigeria is part of the Anti-Personal Mind Bank Con 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 Convention. And uh, there is some stakes for currently on requesting an extension of the Article 5 of Mind Free. So, this is secondary information, but at least we can see the concentration of the threat and we can plan accordingly and we can estimate the people in need. On the right one, it's really about uh, EOARE, uh, what has been done uh, this year, uh, January, August, we are producing uh, a cumulative process every month and uh, we can address and we can by gender, by age, etc. It's the type of tool uh, we, we are developing. Next one. When you are talking about just in the presentation before, how to include mine action into uh, uh, pro monitoring or protection tools, etc. This is a pilot, I would say, this is the first product uh, we tried, uh, we developed with IOM in the displaced tracking matrix. Uh, we included a, a set of three or four questions uh, about uh, people receiving ERRI or not. And uh, uh, people uh, who have faced, who can declare about, they have seen an incident or they heard about an incident, explosive incident during a specific period. Um, it's not, there is no need to go deeper on that today, it's just to show as you have, what we want to push also, it's how to mainstream in any type of, because we don't, we have few access to, to, to communities, how to use the key informant as we are doing in the multi-sectorial needs assessment as part of the humanitarian project cycle, how to, but it happens once a year in, and here with the, the DTM, we could have information every quarter, which will uh, inform and uh, uh, help us to better, better plan. Next, please. Uh, this is also another product uh, which we are developing. It's a victim uh, of exclusive ordinance uh, dashboard. It's really to analyze, uh, take him as far as we can, based on the secondary type of information we are receiving, to analyze and to demonstrate uh, more we can analyze on uh, survivors, uh, people who have been killed or injured, and uh, with cumulative, with, uh, it's, it's, it's a tool which also uh, is really helpful in sensitizing people about one of the pillars of uh, humanitarian mine action, which is victim assistance. Next, please. We'll try to accelerate, maybe. Well, on the data collection, it's quite classical. Huh? It's the who, what, etc. the five Ws of the, of the humanitarian cluster system uh, reporting, uh, reporting system. Uh, partners uh, are, are, are transferring the, the, the data with us, and it's compiling, etc. Just, you got to hear the breakdown. Uh, I say that uh, 700, uh, or 750,000 uh, beneficiaries from UARE, and you can see 350, so it's 40% uh, are IDPs. The number of returnees is quite low because those movements uh, are quite uh, low for the time being. It's more mostly IDPs. And the other 60% are uh, uh, host communities and other communities. Next, please. Okay, this is just to, to, to illustrate uh, some train. Uh, we, we run uh, a knowledge attitude practice and behavior uh, uh, study uh, uh, early uh, uh, in, in 2021. Uh, it was really limited uh, to a, a very urban environment, which is the, the capital state of Borno, uh, Maiduguri, and one uh, local governorate, uh, but uh, which is the suburb of Maiduguri. So, 
uh, it's really urban, but at least we have seen that uh, uh, there is a, uh, a good majority uh, of uh, during of the people who we, we managed to, to 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 interview in that KPB uh, uh, study uh, has a, a knowledge, good knowledge, uh, fair knowledge uh, of, of explosive ordnance. Uh, there is a need to be more innovative in the way to, to, to make sure that the message is better uh, appropriate, but uh, that there is a better understanding. And we got, in fact, it's like in many countries uh, uh, where we are working, uh, we need to, to, to have more specific, uh, to target more specific, specific uh, uh, people, farmers, uh, scrap metal, uh, women and children, collecting wood, shepherding and playing around. Next, please. Uh, yes, in terms of uh, EORE and protection of civilians, it's important for us to make sure that uh, EORE contribute to the protection of civilians in the perspective of victim assistance, meaning to have uh, to develop disability inclusive EORE com uh, and community liaison uh, uh, process uh, to, to, to improve and to systematize the victim data collection. Uh, and to and that is a, a, a step ahead uh, on the type of uh, what the mine action uh, sector can do in victim assistance is to develop a referral password and explosive ordinance and other person with similar needs, meaning person with disability. So that is really to not to develop by uh, the sector services, but it's really to map services to make sure we are able through the different uh, uh, community liaison uh, uh, team to orientate, to refer uh, when possible uh, uh, survivors to, uh, to the, those uh, existing services. Next, please. So to, now it's, it's more to maximize the protection. It's, it's how protection sector could support the mine action subsector. Uh, I said, uh, I talked about um, the, uh, the, 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 those opportunities like the project uh, 21. Now it's also with the, 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 the protection team, GBV uh, and et cetera, uh, how to include in there, uh, how to mainstream in fact, uh, 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 mine action uh, uh, needs, not, it's not mine action needs, it's uh, community needs in relation to mine action threat. Um, it's inclusion of some question into the different research or uh, uh, done by, by, by other sectors. Um, it's uh, to find a way to have uh, incident data collection, integration of safety messages in awareness campaigns, and obviously to have uh, to find a way to, 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 to have a data collection on victims and to be part and uh, to find a way to support this referral pathway system with orientation and a referral. I really hope uh, it was 10 minutes and thank you very much. Many thanks, uh, Gilles. This is very informative, actually. And um, myself, I had many questions when I was um, uh, like watching all these dashboards and trying to think how uh, is it possible for the different tools to talk to each other and especially to, uh, to, to serve the community at the end of the day in order for them to receive the right information and to, uh, as I said uh, previously, to make an uh, informed um, decision about any uh, re possible return or maybe uh, uh, relocation. So, um, uh, I will open the floor to, to the participants uh, in order to comment, react, ask questions, or uh, clarify. We have also uh, Patrice, who is the, uh, the co-facilitator of the Regional Protection Working Group. Maybe uh, he can inform us about uh, the, the next phase for uh, Project 21. But uh, before that, is there any question or uh, reaction to, um, uh, to Fred and Jill presentations? Please uh, do not hesitate to uh, use the uh, raise hand option under uh, reactions if uh, 
you are looking for it or uh, write your question in the in the chat box but you were ve you did great with the with the time fred and jill thank you very much i don't know i don't see any hand raised caitlin you can help me with that no hands up yet Okay, otherwise, if Patrice uh, is still here, if he can uh, just add um, uh, any clarification regarding the, the next step for Project 21, uh, next phase, or any uh, improvement from the first version of the, uh, uh, the first report I saw and the second version that would be issued or already issued, I think. Patrice or Fred, over to you. Yeah, if Patrice is not uh, responding. Um, so we did the, first, the, the the pilot was on Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger in, uh, in 2020. Uh, from there, we, we came with the first analysis that was published um, in, I think it was in, in, in December, 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 January. There is another a second analysis that is uh, being worked on right now, and for the second analysis, the way that we we did it is after inputs from the countries. Uh, the countries wanted to first get and analyze the data within uh, each country uh, independently, and then with their analysis and their analysis between the three region. That's what we are uh, going to publish in the next uh, in the next month or so. Uh, it started in three countries, and very quickly, what we 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 deployed it also in Ivory Coast. Um, there's been interest in this deployed right now in uh, northeast Nigeria and in in Chad, and it's under discussion in in uh, in Cameroon. Um, every single country has got their own history on protection monitoring, their own tools, and which makes it sometimes difficult to navigate. So for example, in Ivory Coast, because it was a new situation, it, it, it was a, the tool, the tool self-imposed in a way or another, and it was shared quite, uh, quite fast. Um, in Nigeria, they've been up and down on uh, merging the protection monitoring that was re under reviewed in Northeast Nigeria with this one. So we use those moments in order to push um, harmonized uh, variables and harmonized uh, uh, data like that. Uh, in Mali, there was a very strong uh, protection monitoring system already in place. And so the, 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 the duplication or the adequation between the two was is still somehow a bit complicated to, to, to set up. In Cameroon, the, the cluster really pushed forward for a, a, an ownership from not only from the humanitarian sector, but also from all the different uh, respondents and in emergency and uh, and in solution. And so they, they want, really want that buy-in to come before anything. The idea is called P21 because the dream is that it's it's a one common tool in the 21 countries of the in the, uh, of the region. Uh, we, de we definitely push it forward and move through the, the cluster. Um, because that's where there is also a, a, a buy-in from the beginning. Um, and that's where we go. Uh, other types of development is that we've been, yes, we've been reviewing the questionnaires uh, in October, November. We also uh, are in discussion with other organizations that would have liked to have much more specific questionnaires, much more specific to one subsector or one, sec for example, for education. And the discussion go along the line of the base is use the, the P21, the main questions of the P21 as they are, like that you can feed into that system. And if you have got enumerators that are doing work and work, looking at uh, specifically on the, the elements of education, grow, propose those harmonized questions that we will promote as an add-on to the P21 and, and implement it. And I think that's also the message for the for uh, URE and, and others that like we are trying to, we've got everything to gain into sharing information between, between us, trying to use similar types of uh, sampling methodology and, and so on, and get data as good as they get, or yeah, 
and it's better to have data that are available on time than to have something that's very good but too late. Um, and, and there are many different ways to do that with, uh, you know, in terms of community engagement. The P21 doesn't bring something completely new, but what it brings is that it, it brings it based on data that are much more valid than data coming from one assessment here or another assessment here. And we need to see it as a building block. P21 is one building block. The, the MSA, uh, done per country another one the ones from the region or the for that reach is doing are another one the dtm and so on and it's the moment where we're going to put all, everything that together and to provide the analysis in terms of protection that will be particularly important but we need to have a common language so that we can talk to each other and compare data that are comparable over thank you Thank you, Fred. I think we are uh, heading towards that. Uh, this is the, the first step and uh, a lot needs to be done. Um, uh, before uh, asking, I have a question for uh, that I received for uh, Gilles. I want to uh, give the floor to Patrice because uh, he's, he wants to, to also add a few things. Patrice, over to you. Well, th thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Fura, and thank you, uh, Fred and, uh, and Jill, for for, for providing this, this insight. I think something, something that is very progressive, I can say is, uh, a, a, as Fred mentioned, is the fact that uh, when we are reviewing the, the, the questionnaire after the pilot phase, a few questions were, were in, integrated, you know, when it's come to, 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 to mine action. And uh, you, for those who are familiar with the, uh, with the questionnaire, uh, I think Fred mentioned it. When it's come to protection incident, we have a question. We have an optional question there. Uh, uh, when it's come to also uh, restriction of movement, yeah, this is something we have put also there. How a, a, a you know IED is or is uh, impacting the, the the freedom of movement in in various uh, in various uh, places of displacement. And the good news, I mean, I don't know, I'm not sure it's a good news, but the, what we we have discovered uh, in the first semester of 2021 is that uh, close to 6% of the respondents say that due to the, to the, to the existence of mine or, or, or any other uh, explosive ordinances, they are, the, the movement is, is restricted, you know, in various entities. And we will, as we are in the process, as Fred said, we are in the process of drafting the, the second uh, analytical report, we should be able to, to reflect more on this, uh, on, this, uh, on this data that we have collected for the first uh, semester of this year. But the last point in terms of opportunity, uh, where I, I think that the mine risk education as a whole should also you know, be reflected in the in the community engagement because we ask a lot of questions about you know the various humanitarian services, the various information that uh, uh, IDPs and and affected the uh, other affected population are receiving in terms of services, uh, information they are receiving when it's come to, to COVID prevention, but we don't have any information, you know, any specific question when it's come to you know, do they want to receive or which kind of information they are receiving when it's come to mind risk education, you know, from the various entities. And this, we can put it under the community engagement and we will be very happy to, to discuss further, you know, when it's come to the formulation with you and the mass and with, uh, with, uh, with the advisory group uh, on, on the way, the best way to formulate this question as far as community engagement is concerned. So yeah, over to you, Huda, uh, and thank you very much for organizing this. Thank you, uh, Patrice. Actually, uh, you uh, mentioned what we, we request and uh, what we are uh, expecting from the advisory group uh, is, is to help this project mainstream uh, in, a, in a more efficient way. Uh, the, um, I think the EORE uh, and mine action related question. And um, I think it's important to, to have this uh, discussion with the advisory group um, um, following this webinar and to continue the, the work and to share more um, information about uh, how we want to uh, develop the further the questionnaire. We don't want it to be a 1,000 question uh, um, 
like a t template. Uh, what all what we want is to to make it more efficient in order for for the regional protection working group to to mainstream the messages and also the the information that. Um, in a harmonized ma manner, especially that, as we saw in, in Jill presentation, there are uh, very particular challenges, even in, in one subregion or even part of one country like uh, Northeast uh, uh, Nigeria. Uh, and um, I will uh, end with the, end up with the, this question for to to Jill regarding. Uh, uh, the expansion of this work uh, in, in Nigeria and how uh, UNMAS sees the, the, the Project 21 initiative or other regional initiative. Is it um, something that UNMAS, um, I, I know that the AORs are contributing to that, uh, uh, but also to, to see their perspective when it comes to a regional harmonization of data. Jill, over to you, uh, please, if, if you can uh, clarify UNMAS position and uh, suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, currently, uh, the, the, uh, we say the issue of uh, data, etc. For the time being, there will be a focus on the Northeast Nigeria because of the, the mandate. Uh, which have been given to, to the, the United Nations. It's about the, the, the Boko Haram crisis. So any type of expansion to, to a national level for us, uh, it's uh, strategically, it's through the establishment of a National Mine Action Center uh, in order to, to, and to support the government in establishing it. And that is for us a way to uh, work on, on improving access to data, access uh, of mine action data, which can potentially be used uh, in, for other uh, uh, purposes. From the regional uh, perspective, I think more we will be regional in terms of messaging, in terms of data collection, in terms of harmonization, better, because this is they are the same people moving from one place to the other, impacted by the same type of protection, uh, uh, issues uh, uh, and it's for me it's, it's it's clear it has to be now the system i think uh, uh, the un system rather than uh, ngo the un system it's not so agile in in being regional but uh, things are, are moving for instance uh, we we have been uh, collaborating remotely with the cameroon uh, unicef cameroon in order to to harmonize the, the type of uh, brief for the staff uh, to harmonize the, the messaging in, in uh, EOERI, for instance. Uh, Elmas just opened uh, uh, a sub-office uh, in Niger from Burkina Faso. So it means that potentially there is a, a way to, to, at least for the, the mine action sector, to think more regionally. I hope I... Thank you, Gilles. Uh, it was uh, very clear, and we will uh, get into more details with the network uh, networking uh, session now. And I will hand over to uh, Ines uh, and Caitlin. Over to you. Thank you, thank you, UNHCR, DRC, and um, and UNMAS for for your interventions. Um, now, as we enter the second part of this, uh, we webinar, sorry, which is the networking circle. We will therefore stop uh, recording and the recording of the first part of this webinar will be available at a um, later date.